Hey, welcome. We are so glad you are joining us. This is the Curious Friends podcast, the DCC Discovery Church podcast. We had this dream to get together and talk, have uh, have some conversations, some stories, and uh, we're just excited to share with you about all that God is doing in our city, in our church, and you might know, might not know mm. who we are, and so we kind of wanted to start there with an open invitation to be a part of this project experiment thing that we're doing together. And so, Greg... Who are you? <laughs> I'm Greg Lindsay, lead pastor, Discovery Church Colorado in Colorado Springs. Been here for 14 years. Who are you? Oh, hi. <laughs> I'm Jason Privet. I serve as the discipleship pastor here at Discovery Church, and um, I'm a, I'm a champion for the city, mm-hmm. champion for uh, for ministry, for who we are. And um, I think one thing that's true of both of us is yes, we work at Discovery, but. Um, Man, Greg, you're you're so kingdom minded. Mm. I'm just trying to chase after that too. And so uh so yeah, I think one of the reasons why we wanted to do this podcast is um you know, we have the weekend experience and we have um uh, everything that we're trying to accomplish and do on a weekend, but we are so much more than a weekend experience. Yes. Who we are, who you are, who I strive to be, so much more than a weekend experience. And so I think the question that we start with to really frame this whole thing is why are we doing a podcast? Yeah. Well, you know, it's a little bit weird, honestly. This this is not even I just found out this is not even going to be classified as an episode. This is <laughs> this is like an introduction or something. It's so, a trailer. <clears throat> it's a trailer. The it's intro. The, the official term. <laughs> trailer. Um so uh, you know, we don't we don't feel the the cool intro music and all the stuff that's coming after that, but um, but there's been a lot of thinking. Actually, Steve on our staff is mm-hmm. the guy that spearheaded this. So I want to give props to Steve um, for, so for bringing this to fruition. Honestly, I, I was a little bit resistant at first, if I'm honest. I, it seems like everybody today wants to do a podcast mm-hmm. and, and uh, is doing a podcast. And maybe we're a little late to the game. But um, the question is, do we really have something to say? And, and we do. And you can't contain it in 30 minutes on a weekend. Yeah. It doesn't capture the essence of what we're wrestling with, what we're talking about, what we're dreaming of. I mean, COVID has wrecked the church, not only our church, the, the, the capital C church in a lot of ways, and we're recovering and God is good and the future's bright, but there's a whole lot going on behind the scenes. And I think when you and I interact with people that are a part of the tribe here at DCC and love this place, it, it, we, we take things for granted that we're talking about and working on every day. And even some people that are pretty connected and involved and sold out and bought into what we're doing here, they don't know a lot of the conversations that are happening right? and the dreams that we're dreaming. And there's a lot of stuff that we are thinking about and dreaming about in this place. You know, how do we stay relevant? Uh, how do we continue to reach people who are far from God? You know, that crowd's growing. Mm-hmm. That category of nuns is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, not only in Colorado Springs, but across the country. I just heard last week that... The number, the percentage of Americans that now consider themselves religious is now 49%. Wow. So we are no longer the majority for the very first time. So we've, we, the Capital C Church, we've got some work to do, and we're not sitting back and, and just being fat and happy doing things like we did it five years ago, even three years ago. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think one of the things that COVID did for us was say, hey, something needs to change. Yeah. And, and God's really got in cause it. He's used it. I think in a really cool way, and so for our for people that care about uh, the things that we care about, care about DCC, but this is not just about a church; this is about the kingdom. Care about the kingdom, you know. We want to stay curious. Sometimes in Christian circles, we we kind of look down on curiosity. Like you believe what you're supposed to believe, and you behave the way you're supposed to yeah. to behave. Yeah. And curiosity is not encouraged in the church. You know, yeah. we say question everything here. Yep. Right, and we don't have the perfect answers. You know, we're walking with God in that. But this is this is an opportunity for us to to have some really cool conversations. And then there's a whole story piece of who we are. Mm-hmm. You know, helping people discover their stories is the first part of our mission statement. And uh, you're gonna hear on this podcast, you're gonna hear lots of episodes, story from stories from people, not just part of the DCC tribe, but people in our city that are making a kingdom difference. Yeah. You know, business people, government officials, that that sort of thing. So you know, um, I'm curious about how this is all going to turn out, but I'm really excited about where we're headed. <laughs> I am too. <laughs> and we, I'm curious. We have a few notes here, and we've had like conversations and we've had talks, but we're not 
adhering to any notes. These are just uh, some some things that maybe we discussed. I actually think there's more here within notes or thing ideas that we've had on what the what the podcast could be or become. Uh, there's more than we're going to be able to cover here today. Oh, no doubt about it. Um, and so, you know, you not everybody may know us, and uh, you, you're just making me think about the question of not ju- not just why are we doing this podcast, but why does Discovery Church exist? Uh, that's a great question. You well, want to answer it? You've been around well. Around. Well, <laughs> no, that was that was a lot I, I, for I, you. I want to hear your version. Well, well, I think that I think so. Why does Discovery Church exist? I think um, part of the answer is why did I come to Discovery? You know, right. Um, the, the second that's question great. is why did I come to Discovery? Why did you come to Discovery? Mm-hmm. And I I never wanted to work at a church. Uh, work at a church. I barely wanted to be a part of a church mm. ever again after a first experience. And I I worked at a great church with a great team, uh, but I got to this place thinking I could do more damage for the kingdom, more damage mm. for good. Um, meet with more people as a bartender, mm. um, and and be more of an example of Jesus outside of the church than I ever could inside the church. And I found this little church meeting in a in a pump it up with this ragtag, scrappy group of people. Mm-hmm. And um, I knew one thing I loved when I started here as in students. Um, I loved teenagers and I loved Jesus. And even though I didn't want to be in the church, there was a church that was reaching people that no other church was. Right. And I wanted to be a part of that. Right. And I think discovery exists in that. And I think one of the challenges for me and for us is how do we meet how do we meet people as people? Right. Everybody's broken, whether you've been walking with God your entire life or you, you know, you, you're just meeting God for the very first time. And so for me, why does Discovery Church exist? It's to walk into that. Yes. To be a safe place and not just a landing place, but I hope and I pray, I think we are praying together that this becomes a lifelong walk with God that has a very easy on-ramp. I don't think I've ever explained it to you like that or ever no, said some great. of those words together, but that's preach. why I'm here, Yeah, and I think that's a part to me of why Discovery Church exists. You know what I was just thinking of? You said that, Jason. It, you were probably right when you thought, you know what, I think I can reach more people for the kingdom as a bartender than I ever could being a part of a church. I'm not so sure you were wrong about that. <laughs> And if you think about it, we've come we've come full circle back to that now, back to exactly where we where you are, where mm-hmm. we're realizing we got to be a sent people. Yes, that we're a sent people. That what I do on a Sunday morning, what you do on a Sunday morning, what I do when I stand on stage and preach, has no more kingdom significance than what anybody else sitting in those seats is going to do yes. during the course of their week. And yep. so, it's really interesting as you say that because it, it takes man. We've come we've come full circle on that. Because we did. I mean, like I think many churches, I don't know if I'd say most, but many, you know, we got caught up in the weekend experience. And, you know, a big part of the journey that we're on together now as a team is trying to figure out how do we break people from thinking that that is what's most important when we ourselves have spent years creating the mindset yes. around that this is what's most important. And so, uh, you know, you talk about deconstruction is a big word in, the chur- in church circles today. We got to deconstruct. We got to deconstruct. I think some things that some people think we need to deconstruct, honestly, don't need to be deconstructed. But I'm I'm in it, and and that's exactly what you know the journey that we're on now, and we're learning a lot in that process. But trying to break down the very thing that we've been creating, <clears throat> a dependence on a great weekend experience, which we're going to continue that up. Yes. I mean, what happens here at Discovery is real. It is a safe place on the weekend, regardless of how your story reads. Um, it is a place to encounter God. I mean, that, that to me is the most encouraging thing through it all that we've been through the last 14 years through COVID, you know, when we chose to do a one blood series and talk about race for eight weeks and, and several people walked away through yeah. all that we've been through, you know, God has been in it and people have continued to say, I can feel God's presence in this place. And mm-hmm. as long as we keep doing that, everything's going to be okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's good, and that's, I mean, to me, that's all becoming less of a a weekend church and more yes. of a, we want to help people find God yes. and, and walk with Him um, through and in whatever they're going through, and that's that's really our challenge. Yes. Because as we're deconstructing, we're also reconstructing, yes. and, and we both have friends who, in their deconstruction process at, uh, at the churches that they're leading or they're a part of, they've said no entirely to the weekend experience. Yes. 
Yes. Right. Their answer is we're going to shut down the weekend experience because we got to go to homes and we got to we got to do house churches and there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, there's there's really something special there and really, really, really cool in there that really that we're continuing, I think, to pursue and chase after and learn from. Yes. But you you said it. The weekend experience has a place. It does. It's important. And I have seen and heard from so many people. I know you've even more than me heard from people who had an encounter with God in that hour that was one of the most powerful experiences yes. that they've ever well, had. Yes. Well, and the other thing is, <clears throat> you know, with all of our faults, the Capital C Church, most people in America particularly, still think that church is the place you go to find God. Yeah, yeah. They, they still think that. Now, whether they're going to go there or not, I mean, I think that's what we're learning is they're not coming. The come and see days are, are over. Yeah. And I, I firmly believe that, and and I think that uh, I think COVID stirred a little bit of that, maybe sped it up a bit, but it was already happening, right? I mean, church attendance in America was already in the decline stage, and um, but the come and see days, I truly believe that that those days are over, where masses of people come and see now, but st- people still do believe I can find God at church, so people are still going to stagger in wander in, come crawling in when their life is a mess, thinking maybe God's my last resort. So, you know, it's still, it still can be that place. But what we've come to is, and honestly, it's been a part of my own journey, our journey together, you know, um, and, and what I've considered to be just a big miss on my part was this whole sent piece, that we are a sent people. You know, John twenty twenty one, Jesus says, I, Father sent me, I'm sending you. And we haven't done a good job of sending people. We, we just haven't. Um, yeah. You know, we've trained up volunteers. We've equipped people. You know, we're, 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 we're changing one of the hills we die on from equip to empower because you can equip people all day long for specific mm-hmm. tasks and never empower them to bring the kingdom where they live, learn, work, and play. Yes. And so, you know, through, through reading, you know, book after book after book about what God is up to in our world, not necessarily in America, but in our world— it's like, what are we missing here? And the difference in what's happening in Africa and India and China and what's happening in America, as I yeah. see it, is they embrace the fact from day one that there are sent people. And multiplication is happening. It's not addition. It's not shuffling this group of sheep or church people from this building to this one. No. It really is. They're living as sent people. They're not making it complicated. They're learning to get their own fingerprints on the yeah. Bible and teach other people to do it. And God is doing amazing, amazing things. And so this whole go and be piece of who we are supposed to be and what the kingdom is supposed to look like is is at the forefront of our thinking uh, today. And, and and like you said, it doesn't mean that what we've been to this point is all bad or all gone. Right, sure. The, the the weekend experience is still a part of it, but you know what our friend Roy Moran, the pastor, mm-hmm. pastor friend in Kansas yeah. City, says. You know, at their church, you know, Show Creek, this weekend experience a great place to start. It's a terrible place to stop. Yes, there is so much more than that. So we've embraced that. We're starting to live that stuff out, and uh, hopefully, it's going to be our people are going to feel it more week in, week out, every single week. They're going to feel it in this place. Yeah, and it, that makes me think about you know part of where we are today. It's I mean, we're stories of stories, you know. It's it's all God's story. Yes. Um, but I think we were we were in this place as a church, and I was part of this, and and you were leading the way in that. Mm-hmm. And I and what I'm about to say, there's and there's no shame in it, right? You know, it was good, but we're creating this place that is kind of dependent on the weekend. And at some point, you woke up and you tell a story of I think it's 2018. You tell a story where things changed and you started to do more mm, excavation. Yeah. And I... Would you share that story? You talk, Yeah, you're talking about November 2017, I think. Sure. I don't and know then, the date. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, and then things flipped in 18, so we started yes. to do things differently. Right, right, right. Yeah, right, right. So, you, so, yeah. 3,000. Yeah, 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 3,000. And, you know, so we, you know, it, we, we got this series going on called Your Story Safe Here, because honestly, it is mm-hmm. every single week, and, mm-hmm. and um, you know, it just is, and it's a great part of who we are. Here at DCC, but I was preaching that weekend and preaching on Saturday night, and when we were still doing Saturday night service, and I remember thinking, "Man, there's a lot of people here this weekend," and it felt so good. It's a, big crowds are fun. I mean, it's just the vibe and energy is so good, and, and worship in our place is off the chain, and you know, yeah. rocks it out, and always just man brings the energy. And it was a great, it was a great night. I looked out, and I thought, "Man, there's a lot of people here." So weekend's over, 
and we get we get the numbers in, and it's about it was like I don't know 30, 35 people short of three thousand. I was like, wow, man, we're gonna break three thousand people. You know, when I got here in two thousand eight, church was less than hundred people. I'm like, oh wow, here we go. This is gonna be another big milestone, and you know, we had had a couple of years in the fastest hundred growing hundred fastest growing churches in America, all that stuff, and something was different this time in that it only felt good for a few seconds. Mm. And then, and then it was like, oh my gosh, yeah, but three thousand what? Mm. You know, we've got a lot of consumers here. We got a lot of spectators. We got a lot of cultural Christians. We got, we got people who don't really understand what it means to take up your cross and follow Jesus. And you know, the word that everybody's talking about and writing about discipleship. You know, we we've got to do a better job of challenging people to really surrender, sacrifice, serve. You know. <clears throat> And so, beginning of 2018, we started we started preaching different in this place. Uh, still a safe place, regardless of how your your story reads. We're still going to read with lead with love and grace. Uh, but man, this truth piece of what it really means to follow Jesus, mm-hmm. we're gonna we're gonna hit it. And we started hitting it hard, harder. Uh, there was a there was a there was a measure. I mean, you could feel the difference. And we ended up losing people. Yeah. And so, you know, we probably trended down three or four hundred people a weekend before COVID ever hit. Exactly. But that was a pivot point for us as a church, but it was a pivot point for me too, yeah, you. personally. And I said, you know what, we've, we've got to change this. You know, we need to focus on building a much stronger foundation for what it is God wants to do through this place called Discovery Church. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that deconstruction started, I think then way before COVID and now it's, a, it's, I think we're more in reconstruction and construction phase yes. these days. Yes. And I think that's a perfect segue. That's a part of why we want to do this podcast. When yes. I think about the framing question for our trailer, intro, whatever you want to call this, right? it's why are we doing this podcast? And there is so much going on beneath the surface and behind the scenes that we'll never have time to talk about right. in a weekend experience. Right, right, right. And so this this podcast, I think, gives us the opportunity, and you've said some of this, but we can we can dive more in. I mean, this is not manuscripted. Right. Uh, you know, this is this is all, uh, kind of off the cuff. <laughs> it I've, is. I've already hit you with a couple thoughts or questions yeah. that we didn't even think about. That's great. But that's the beauty of this podcast, is we can talk about what's going on in the world. We can be curious friends. Mm-hmm. You know, we can... We don't have time. Talk about what's going on in the world. We don't have time in an hour-long service sometimes. Right. <laughs> to talk about some of the things that need to be talked about, maybe prayed about. This is an opportunity to do that. This is also the, I think to me, the peek behind the curtain. We get the question, I get the question a lot, are you full-time at the church? What do you do? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what, what all do you do? Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think this is this is some of the opportunity to chase after. Not only is your story safe here, but but we want to do something. We we want to we want to be more in the in the kingdom, and we don't have all the answers, right? Nope. Uh, we, I mean, this is not the, the. If you're coming here and you're tuning into this podcast and you're like, oh, how do I do church? Uh, we invite you to be curious with us because yes. we we maybe have a thing or two figured out, but we don't know all the things. And the more we know, the more I know that we don't know. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, I was thinking as you were talking. What I don't want, this particularly this non-episode, as I'm told, <laughs> this non-episode to be is to create a framework or a way of thinking that this is going to be about the church and what we think the church should be. Yeah. This thing is totally about uh, what your life can be. Mm. And, you know, the reason that discovery, part of the reason that discovery is the way that it is, good, bad, or otherwise, is because I'm a fallen pastor. You know, I crashed and burned in ministry. 17 years ago as a pastor, I was out of ministry for three years. Discovery was my first step back. The step back was rough. Discovery was struggling. First few years were brutal. God had a story to tell there, but I don't want anybody to listen to this and think, oh, these guys are just going to talk about church. You know, the only reason that what church is matters is because church should be doing something for you in your life and story. And you ultimately, we are the church, right? So this is about individual lives and individual stories and what life can be uh, and the journey that all of us have been on together. You know, <clears throat> what's changed in our lives and stories over the course of these years, uh, the weekend experience has been a small part of that. But what does it look like to live in smaller community together, to have real depth of relationship, to be able to walk into conflict 
which we've had too many times in a, in a really healthy, great way, and come out with a relationship that is stronger on the other side of that. I mean, that has not always been the case, mm-hmm. right? We've walked away from some of those conversations, and it hasn't been stronger. In fact, it's in some cases brought an end to the, to the relationship. So there's no fix-all, be-all there, but, but there's life in the kingdom. Mm-hmm. There's life in the kingdom that is available to every single one of us that is so much more than we can capture the essence of on a weekend, that any church can, so much more that, than, than you can put together in a one hour, one hour and 15 minute weekend experience. And I think we're missing something. And we're discovering that as we go, as we keep digging, you know, and it really, it's not like we're making up new stuff. We're basically, you know, we're, we're pulling back the curtains and the layers on, on 2,000 years of history mm. that is ultimately moving us back towards, more back to what Jesus himself always intended this thing called church to be. Yeah. So it's not like we're coming up with something rad or hip or cool. We're just doing our best to what should church be? And if we are the church, then the ultimate question is, what's, what does life in the kingdom look like for me? Yeah. That, that's what we're really yeah. after here. And so when we hear stories of crash and burn, when we hear stories of struggles, when we hear stories of divorce and, and loss of job, loss of career, when we hear these kind of things, you know what? There's still a life available in that. That's life to the fullest. It's what Jesus promises us. And so... How do we keep our bearings? How do we get perspective? How do we continue to move towards that? So all that to say, I just don't want anybody to hear this and say, oh, these guys are just going to talk about church every week. No. Because I'm telling you, most people aren't interested in that. We're going to talk about life every week. Yeah. And I'm even thinking about um, on our on our next episode, or I guess our first episode. Yeah, you go. Episode uh, one. Episode one. This is just, this is the, uh, it's, it's the warm up. Yes. <laughs> um, but on episode one, you know, we're going to hear a, a lot about the life uh, of Cami. Yeah, one of our one of our worship leaders, mm-hmm. um, who we all love and respect, and has a story. Superstar. And I, you know, maybe I I actually don't know what she's going to talk about. Maybe yeah. she talks about church, but my guess is she's going to talk a lot about her, just her journey of walking with God, and that's really what it is. In my in my head, that's that's what we need to get back to. Yes. Like some episodes, let's talk about church. Let's deconstruct it, sure. reconstruct it, let's break it apart. But, you know, the church is about walking with God. And I, I loved what you said. It, it made me start thinking, man, Jesus, when he was here, he was leaving the 99 to go for, mm-hmm. to go for the one, mm-hmm. chasing after that single individual heart. And so maybe the purpose of Curious Friends um, is to chase after each and every single individual heart as we go along with this and saying that you matter. Yep. You don't just you, you don't just matter to us, but you matter to God. And I think about where we landed yeah. when we were talking about notes and our ideas. Really, you know, we could have said that this podcast is going to be about how to be a great leader. Maybe some episodes or one episode or something we talk about being a leader. We're going to invite somebody else. We're going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a few other people. We got. Yeah. We'll, we'll stay curious about that. Yeah, we got right. things to there learn. There we go. We'll, we'll find a curious friend who's a good leader and bring <laughs> yeah. him in here and talk yeah. to him. Yeah. So. yeah. Well, you find one, you let me know. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Well, you know, I think, I think that, you know, story and rescue, two yes. key words of, of our journey. Doesn't make them perfect, uh, but... Uh, you know, Jesus, I think what, what, what we want people to hear is Jesus cares about every aspect of your story, and he wants to rescue you, and he wants to continue to rescue you. And that's the part I think that we forget about a lot of times in the church. There's a continuing rescue every single day that's available with Jesus. It's not a once and done. Uh, there's an everyday life to be experienced that honestly... Very few Christian people, people who call themselves Christian, yeah. church people, Christ followers, yeah. are really experiencing. And so we want to talk about, you know, the hard lessons we've learned, the digging we've done, because I feel like we're on to some buried treasure in the kingdom yeah. uh, in this place. And, and that's what we want to talk about and unpack, you know, as we as we run through these episodes with the people that are going to be on here with us. Yeah. And we're going to be hearing from... You know, every 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 month, every week, whenever the podcast coming out, <laughs> um, it, we're going to be hearing from different people, and we kind of know the idea of the lineup, but we don't know everything that's going to be said, and so. Well, and they're not all pastors, right? No, we're going to be hearing from community leaders, they're not and all business church leaders. People. They're not all church people, and and uh, a lot of them are volunteers for the kingdom yes. that are doing amazing things too. So it's it's going to be it's going to be an exciting journey, yeah, that we're going to get to take together yeah. on this thing. And we're we're excited about this journey. 
Uh, we're, yeah. We are curious. <laughs> I'm curious about what this is going to turn into. Me too. Um, and and honestly, that's man. Here's here's maybe where we land. Is um, you know we we know very little about what we are doing for sure. Our methodology may change. Yes. And as soon as and we 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 take a lot of risks here. We yes. try stuff that doesn't always work, and when we find out it's not working, we're going to chase after a solution and change our methodology yep. quickly because we know that what we're doing is not the important thing. Yes. And as curious friends, we need to be chasing after who we are and who we are becoming. That's right. And maybe that's what this whole experiment thing is about. And we can't wait to uh, continue to engage in this conversation. Uh, and we want to invite you back here from yep. Cami in our first episode. Yeah, she's going to be awesome. Yeah. You're going to want to hear it. Get get these two guys off of here, hear from, hear from somebody who's going to be, you know, more than us. That's <laughs> right. Well, I but, can't, can't step down. It's going to be a step up. So, hey, love being with you. Hope you love this, where we're headed. We don't know exactly what it looks like, but we want you taking the journey with us. So stay curious, our friends.